Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to repair the engine on your Honda lawnmower, specifically the GX series of motors covering models GXV120, GXV140, and the GXV160. Now, a little bit of history about this mower. Um, it was actually a buddy of mine that brought this over and his complaint was that when he put the choke to start mode and tried to start the engine, that this thing, no matter what he did, wouldn't start. And so prior to him bringing it to me, um, he actually went and checked to make sure that there was gas in the fuel tank. Um, so we know that's good and the gas thing is fresh. He also confirmed that the gas valve on the engine was in the on position. He also checked the air cleaner to make sure that it was clean. And of course he couldn't get it started. And so he brought it to me and I did a little further troubleshooting. I thought maybe that it was a carburation problem, but it also turned out that it wasn't because when I undid the spark plug right here, um, which by the way is also new that it was covered in fuel which leads me to believe it's an ignition problem and so uh, real quick test here um, You can actually go to your local auto parts store. They sell this little tool here called a spark tester so how you do the test with ignition coil is you plug the Electrode side into the boot and then you clip the little clamp onto a bolt on the valve cover here like so, okay, making sure that there's actually a gap for the spark to jump. When I pull it, you should see a spark fly across that. So no matter what I'm doing here, I'm not seeing any spark, which is telling me that either the ignition coil has failed or the ignition coil cutoff switch has failed. So we're gonna dig a little bit, a bit into this engine and see what's going on. So some of the basic tools that we're gonna to need to troubleshoot the ignition system is a number two Phillips screwdriver, a multimeter to check for continuity, a pair of needle nose pliers, and a 10 millimeter socket, uh, 10 millimeter deep socket, I should say. Now, the first thing we have to do is actually get this recoil assembly off the top of the motor and remove the entire gas tank assembly. And this is actually just held on with three sort of little hook clips here and one Phillips screw at the back of the motor. Undo the single Phillips screw, pop off the cover from the three retaining tabs, and then loop the starter rope through the notch in the cover. Taking our 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna undo the recoil, recoil starter assembly by taking these three nuts off. Lifting the starter recoil assembly out. Making sure that the gas cap is tight, we're going to lift the entire fuel tank assembly and just flip it out of the way, exposing the engine. Here's the coil held on with a 10 millimeter stud and then a 10 millimeter bolt here, and then we've got an ignition cutoff circuit right here. The first thing we're going to actually do is test the ignition cutoff circuit because when you actuate the handlebar control at the top, there's actually a little micro switch inside here that would ground this coil out to shut the ignition coil off or to disable the coil. So we're just gonna use a pair of needle nose pliers and we're gonna pull the connector off like so. Now we're gonna set our multimeter to either ohms or continuity mode is we're gonna take one wire and we're gonna touch it to um, the lead that we just disconnected. And then, if you come in over the top here, you'll see the side of the switch right here, okay? And so, so the wire goes on the switch and there's just a flat spot on the switch. With the throttle in essentially any in choke mode or any speed other than off, there should be zero continuity as shown by my meter. Now if I slide this control to stop, that should enable the kill switch, which now should cause this thing to show continuity. So it's not the switch that has failed. It's showing continuity when it's off, which is correct. It's shorting this to ground, which means that this coil is likely faulty. So to take the coil off, we're just going to undo the two 10 millimeter bolts. All right, so with the coil removed, we're gonna set our multimeter to ohms mode, okay? Just make sure your meter works. 
we're going to test the primary side of the coil. You take one of the probes, touch the iron core, right, which is this piece here, and then you're going to touch the cutoff grounding lead here. And based on the factory service manual, it should read between 0.7 and 0.9 ohms. We want to check the secondary coil um, and see how that fares. And how you do that is you're going to take one of your leads, touch it into the spark plug boot so you make good contact with the metal piece inside, and then touch it against the iron core. And factory's manual says that it should measure between 6.3 and 7.7 .7 kilo ohms. So you can see it says OL, meaning there's an open in the secondary circuit. So this coil is actually defective. Okay, so now that we know that the secondary windings on this coil have failed, I took the liberty of ordering a replacement coil from Amazon Canada. This is a knockoff coil. It costs about 20 bucks. Um, it's a lot cheaper than buying the genuine Honda one, which is $88 Canadian. So as you can tell, um, it almost looks exactly the same with the exception of the fact that the spark plug lead is super long and unfortunately it can't be shortened. Now, you'll notice on the new coil here, it comes with this extra lead um, because, again, it's supposed to fit a variety of different models. I'm just going to disconnect that wire and toss that. And then we're going to just reinstall the coil. With the coil screwed in, we now need to set the gap between the flywheel and the ignition coil. Now, an easy way and foolproof way to get this perfect is actually take a business card and put it in between the iron core of the coil and the flywheel and basically tighten that down applying even pressure in the middle of the coil so the gap is even and just snug the bolts down they don't have to be too crazy tight remember they're 10 millimeter bolts and you're screwing it into an aluminum head or an aluminum bodied engine which can strip really easily just finger tight is good and then to get the card out you just rotate the flywheel and it pushes the card out now we want to slide our ignition kill wire onto the coil and I'm just going to tighten up these leads just a hair by pinching the connectors a bit just so it's a tight fit. Put that on, slide that on and then unfortunately spark plug wire I'm going to have to kind of route down like this beside the plug and then like that until it clicks nice and firm. Flip the gas tank back over, line up the holes in the top, reattach our recoil starter with the three 10 millimeter nuts. Just tighten these down, just finger tight. Really beat up recoil cover. I'm going to line up the tabs here so there's one, two, three tabs that have to line into the top of the gas tank and because this screw is all kind of bent out of shape that we're just going to have to kind of finesse it in somehow. Okay, so I'm going to put my mower control to choke and let's see if she starts. So as you can see from this video, that fixing a non-running Honda lawnmower is exceptionally easy and really cheap to do and can be done with some real basic hand tools. All the items used in this video are in the video description below. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And thanks for watching.